plaintiff, Kimberly Young Woods, says the defendant is her daughter. And as a result of her drug addiction and homelessness, all five of the defendant's children are in foster care. Kimberly's suing her daughter for a loan and two cell phones. Defendant Crystal Young admits that she's been addicted to crystal meth for 12 years, and she has refused to get help ever since her ex passed away. Crystal says she realizes she needs to change her life and regain custody of her children. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Crystal's my daughter. Um, I love her with all my heart. Um, we have had a, re a rocky relationship for many, many years. When Crystal was five years old, she was diagnosed with a very rare disease, tubercular meningitis. Um, at that time, it was 1991, Your Honor, so they didn't know. They had no clue about this disease. There were two people in the entire United States that had it. Hmm. One passed and Crystal survived. Today, the research shows a lot of aggression, um, mental instability. Um, there are many, many side or residual effects of this disease. It's and when did you terrible. see any symptoms that she was suffering from some unusual pain or some unusual health uh, challenges? Okay, um, immediately after her second spinal tap at the hospital, her personality and behavior began to change. How old was she? Five years old. Okay. At age 10, mm -hmm. Crystal began to go to um, the juvenile detention center. She um, was put in juvenile for attacking a teacher. So she became very aggressive, very mm -hmm. violent. Um, for the next 16 years, she spent in and out of the Illinois prison system. For what type of things? Um, grand theft auto, okay. um, theft. Okay. Um, when she was a minor, it was breaking probation, okay. um, smoking, stealing. Got it. A lot of things. Um, during those, that, those 16 years that Crystal was in prison, Every two weeks, two to three weeks, I would drive from St. Louis to Chicago, five hour drive for an hour visit. Turn around and drive right back home. She always had money on her books. She always had money on my phone to call. Um, never lost, lost contact or gave up on this child. Um, Crystal has had six children, one passed. Um, five are in foster care. Why are they being removed from the house? She didn't have a house. <laughs> She's been homeless. Um, her going back and forth to prison. She's still going back and forth? No, prison? not now. Her youngest is five years old. So this was, she had her in prison. When did she leave prison? Four years ago. And she got her children back? No. She has Since not had them? prison, Your Honor, she's mm -hmm. been drug addicted to methamphetamine, homeless. Okay. She has no means of supporting a child or the mental capacity to be able to take care of them. Are you using crystal meth? Yes, sir, I am. Well, that's good to know you admit it. Glad to hear that. <laughs> Give your hand for just a minute. <laughs> and do you make the connection at all with her uh, troubled life as it relates to her health? I do, Your Honor. Okay. I've been screaming from the rooftops <laughs> right. for 26 years that something is definitely wrong. Something went wrong, but without protocol, because there weren't a lot of cases of this. Mm -hmm. They really didn't know how to treat it. They didn't know how to treat the after effect. Let me get a little background from her and let me get a little history of when you start using drugs. Um, I believe that it all started when my mother divorced my father. Um, I became very resentful towards my mother for that. In my eyes, my father could do no wrong. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I moved from my mom's house into with my dad. That's not true, Your Honor. 90% no, of... that's what her memory tells her. Go ahead. 90% of my memory from childhood is with my father. Mm -hmm. My that's mother true, was in my memories. I guess I may have blocked out my mom due to the fact of the resentment. Mm -hmm. um, in 2006, I became very, very addicted to methamphetamines. In 2009, I went into treatment and I left treatment due to the fact that my ex-husband had passed away. How did he pass? Um, a drug overdose. All right. Since then, I hadn't been 
willing to get help. I would lie and cheat and connive people just to get what I wanted and use my drug addiction as an excuse. Um, today I am ready. If somebody is willing to listen and get me the help that I need so that I don't end up like the statistics that I see on the street. Good, good. How long were you in rehab? I was in rehab for 26 days. I was two days before right. I got rehab. So I within that length of time, you will have gotten to where they help diagnose the root causes. Yes. And did you get to that point during your rehabilitation? No, because I think I, then I was just trying to surpass whatever I could to get out. My understanding, a significant part of it is getting you to understand how you became drug addicted. There's a reason it's happening. I think from what I'm hearing is self-medication. This is a very significant and destructive uh, health challenge you have. And progressive, probably. Is yes, it progressive? Right. And so things are Your getting Honor, worse for you. And so I think that's one of the things you need to learn because just going to rehab to get clean, all you're going to do is come out and get you a fresh high. Right. I know people who do that over the year. I got to go to rehab. But boo, when I get out, <laughs> <laughs> they're looking forward to smoking crack again yeah, boy, <laughs> as they walk through the door. Going into rehab, but I, I will get a free. Uh, it's going to be fresh when I get high. It's going to be like I never smoked before. When you were saying what before we get to the loan? Um, Your Honor, Crystal never spent 26 days in any rehab. Okay. She's either gotten kicked out, she started a fire in one, um, not participating, being aggressive. She usually just gets kicked out. Okay, has she had an analysis by a counselor or a psychiatrist? Your Honor, I've tried. I've tried and tried. I can't... Try as in how? Did you take her physically? I took her as a child, yes. Okay. When she turned 18, uh -huh. she didn't my rights stopped. Right. I could not And did they ever tell you what they thought? They didn't know what to say. She nah. wouldn't complete the therapy. She would go in there, she'd cuss me, she'd storm out. The therapist couldn't work with her, he couldn't get the truth they out of her. They should have told you she needed medicine. Absolutely. I did try to get her help. I advocated for this. I advocated for Crystal since day one yeah. of this. Yeah, I, I don't couldn't know if get anybody to listen. Be all. Are you willing to go to rehab? I am. Sorry. How about? Are you willing? <laughs> but in my opinion, that's not going to be enough for you. Are you willing to go to counseling? I and if that psychologist uh, determines you need to speak with a psychiatrist, are you willing to do that? I'm willing to do anything. Okay, I'm so glad to hear that. So we're going to work on both because that's just not uh, somebody that's covering up the pain. Uh, if what she's saying is true, you set fire in the joint, you jumping on your teachers when you're a kid, you jumped on the therapist, you say, when you took in there. And me, Your Honor. And you. In 2016, Christmas Day, Crystal broke my cheekbone. I yeah. have pictures of what Crystal's addiction has done to her in the last three years as well as pictures of my broken cheekbone. You gotta face it, Crystal. This is part of recovery, acknowledging and admitting the effects you've had on others, particularly those children. Um, because I'm being nice to you today because you are so committed. Yeah, this is the injury she caused to you, yeah. She, um, All right, let's lighten it up a little bit because you're sounding like uh, Hannibal Lecter, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get you help so we can talk about it. But yeah, did you know you're doing all this? Yes, I did. How do you feel about that? Not good, Your Honor. Yeah. My biggest regret in life is the people I hurt. Same here. Biggest regret. And so I want you to keep that in mind. The, all the people you've hurt. Physically, mentally, financially, and I'm taking it easy on you because you sound so committed and really sincere about getting some help. Yeah. All right, and you're suing about the loan. How much and what for? Um, we moved out of the state of Illinois in um, 2017 and moved to Colorado. Crystal at that time had asked me to loan her some money. So I loaned her $350 and um, she signed a promissory note, Your Honor, stating that she would pay that back and has yet to make it. It is $350. What about, let me see it, please. And what about the balance of what you're suing for? Um, Your Honor, she goes, she's homeless. 
So I buy her cell phones and every month something happens to the cell phone. It gets stolen, it gets lost, it's this, it's that. And she gets it back? She never gets it back. Okay. So I get her another one. Well, in September I sent her one and in October I sent her another one. What do you think is happening? I don't know if she's selling them or what, Your Honor. I just bought Duh. one in October. She told me for the last two, she would pay me back. I have the receipts for the two cell phones. Yes, let's see it. Ma'am, what do you say to this? Um, I did agree to the money and basically the cell phones. I thought in my own mind that the cell phones were gifts. Did she ever say you have to repay me? For the cell phones? Yes. Fit, fit, verbally, and she did not say it, but I guess... I misread the No, this doesn't contract. miss your cell phones. It's two right. different things. We know I, you're signed for the 350, but the question is the cell phone, because I don't know how you would expect her to repay. If she's not working, she's drug addicted, how did you expect her to pay? You my both, either my of attempt these, was no. to get her to, to take some responsibility, Your was Honor. Was she working? Not as of now. Yeah, she's going to take <laughs> something if she ain't working. She's going to take something from somebody. But was she working when you made the loan? No, sir, Your was Honor. She was working she working when a you promise gave her to go to work? I had bought her a $250 mailbox so that she could get an ID. We took her to go get her ID. We got her birth certificate. We did all of that in May. She was supposed to go to work. She never did. Yeah, I think you have unreasonable expectations based on uh, what you know about her. So I think that's one of the things you have to keep in mind. At this point in time, I do half of the things that I do for Crystal so I can sleep at night. So I can lay my head no, down. You're not sleeping at night knowing that she's on Crystal not. meth. You I'm ain't not. getting much sleep there. Your Honor, she told me she was ready to get some help. That is why I'm pursuing this. If she's ready to get some help, I'm ready to... What all does she have to do at home when she gets back? She doesn't live at home. She's homeless. Okay, well, not anymore. We're going to arrange for you to be dropped right at the rehab center, all right? Once you get off the plane, they're going to be right there. And we're going to take you there. All right? So good luck to you. I believe you're going to succeed because you're committed to it. Sounds like you really want to stop. I'm doing it for me and my babies. I'm doing it for me and my babies. There you go. All right, judgment for the plaintiff. I'm so proud of you, okay? I'm so proud of you.